Good, every, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cynthia Johnson. I am the historian for BPI, BPIA, a longtime BPIA member, and I'm on the nominating committee for the board of directors. So thank you all so much. I'm so pleased to see all the enthusiasm amongst our members, as well as our distinguished slate of candidates. A special thanks goes to the communications team for pulling all of the pieces of this together to our membership committee for overseeing the ballots and for the nominations committee for making all of this possible. Now, I'll admit that I have a little bit of static on my system. So if you're having a little bit of trouble, I do have two co-moderators who are here to help me. So just let us know if you're not hearing us clearly and we'll try to make some corrections. Now, tonight is an opportunity for you all to get to know BPIA's leaders and those who aspire to lead the organization into 20. 22 and beyond. The nominating committee hopes to give you an idea of our accomplishments over the past two years and an idea of what the organization hopes to accomplish in the future. And we want to hear your voices and include your voices in that discussion. BPIA was established in, 18, in 1989 by Barbara Patterson and a group of African-Americans who saw a role for people of color to have a voice in various aspects of international affairs. Through the perseverance of Mrs. Patterson, BPIA was incorporated in the District of Columbia and granted non-tax exempt status in March, 1989. The mission of BPIA is to promote greater involvement of black individuals and organizations in international, charitable, cultural, economic, and education endeavors, and to foster international understanding, relations, and cooperation. This year, the BPIA board is up for re-election. Some will serve a one-year term, some will serve a two-year term. According to our bylaws, our board members have to be staggered 
one half taking office in one year, 50% taking office in the following year. So in an effort to adjust to the staggering requirement, you will notice on your ballots when they go out this evening that some positions will designate a one-year term, other positions will designate a two-year term. The ballot will be open from this evening, October 13th, until October 20th. After the ballots have been tallied, the new board will be introduced at the upcoming annual members meeting, which is October 23rd, starting at 10 a.m. And I do hope most of you will be able to join us that evening and enjoy all that we've done for the past few years and what we're doing in the future. So thank you again for your attention and enthusiasm. Now it's time to meet the candidates. To give you an idea of how the evening will progress, we have a slate of about 23 fantastic candidates for the board of directors. Some are incumbents or some are new candidates. We will introduce each candidate and give them up to two minutes to introduce themselves, share the strengths they bring to the position and what their vision is for BPIA's futures. Candidates will be introduced one by one and give their presentation. We will be trying to keep you strictly to that two minute limitation. So we do have a timekeeper. So if you hear Mrs. Titi yell out, time's up, that means it's time to cut your presentation and we'll move on to the next person. So please be open and willing to accommodate us. We do have quite a few that we are loving and looking forward to hearing. So please just be patient with us all. So if a candidate has not been able to attend tonight, then he or she may have presented a video. So we will share that video with you. If the candidate has not presented a video and has not able to attend, then we will refer you to the members only section of the website where you will see the candidate's bio, photo, and his or her vision about BPI's future. So thanks very much for your attention. So right now we're gonna go ahead and get a chance to listen to our fantastic candidates. So our first candidate is running for the office of the president. We have two individuals who are running for president. That's Ms. Alexandria Maloney and the incumbent Sylvia Stanfield, Ambassador Sylvia Stanfield. So we will first introduce Alexandria Maloney and give her two minutes to share her thoughts about BVIA's future and the strength she brings to the organization. Alexandria, please introduce yourself and share your thoughts with our group. Hello to familiar and new faces. My name is Alexandria Maloney and I'm running for the role of BPI president. I joined the organization in 2015 and fast forward a few years where I began serving as a board member and communications director of the organization. So in my day job, I work for the US Department of Defense and outside of work, I lead DEI, social justice, arts and philanthropic efforts internationally with organizations like Truman National Security Project, Black Fine Arts Month, Foreign Policy for America, and others. So what I've learned from peer social impact organizations is that they are formally and actively uh, and strategically seated at the table and engaging leaders in, in our nation's highest institutions. And this should be the case for BPIA. My vision for the future of BPIA is simple bring this organization to the national level, engaging directly with the Hill and the White House and federal agencies to support increased DE&I efforts and pipelines, putting BPIA at the forefront of current events and issues pertaining to our community and lifting the voices of BPIA members in this space while giving others the opportunities to serve. The biggest strength that I bring to this role is my commitment to this organization and to each of you as members. I worked for years to build and engage BPIA's digital and global community, bringing us new opportunities and jobs, helping to mentor the next generation, conceptualizing and leading the BPIA virtual conference and career fair, as well as leading my dynamic comms teams, which makes the magic happen behind the scenes in, in very new and innovative ways. We are in a unique moment in history where BPIA and its community at large can make a major impact for black professionals not only in the US, but around the world. And it would be my honor and my privilege to lead BPIA on this path of changing and challenging the status quo 
as well as supporting real change in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandria. Ambassador Sylvia Stanfield, our incumbent president, please share your thoughts with us. Unmute yourself. Uh, after assuming the presidency of BPIA in 2015, I've actually led the organization's resuscitation and revitalization. I've improved its operations, shown I can improve the finances, the program, growing its membership. Uh, the same year I began the BPIA's International Career Expo on the Howard University campus, uh, that's morphed into the International Virtual Career Fair, uh, really jewels in BPIA's crowns. I've encouraged new programs that are responsive, I think, to members' interest, supported the initiatives of student volunteers, increased the diversity of the board, promoted good governance practices and education of board members. And I've drawn on my network of government and professionals in the international affairs arena in rebuilding and expanding BPIA's influence. I've been able to do this. I'm retired diplomat after 30 years and I've had numerous leadership uh, positions uh, that I was a senior advisor for mentoring, uh, served as a diplomat in residence at Florida A&M and at Spelman. And I am very pleased that a number of students I worked with are now in the foreign service doing quite well. With regard to the future, I see BPIA one having paid staff, we need that, and interns to assist with administrative matters, uh, that we would be the recipient of grants and financial awards. I see us expanding ties and relations with US educational institutions across the United States with leading businesses and corporations. 10 with, seconds. With influential organizations and entities and with BPIA being viewed as the preeminent organization for information and support of individuals as time careers in the international affairs arena. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Stanfield. The next candidate is the Vice President for Professional Development, Hatswell Sandila Hatswell. She was not able to join us tonight, but she does have a video that we'd like to share with you. Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Sandila Sachuayo, and I'm an economist at the International Monetary Fund, where we are in the midst of a very busy annual meeting cycle, and that's why I can't be there this evening. Now, prior to joining the fund, I attended a Spelman College for undergrad, Stanford University for my master's, and UC Berkeley for my PhD in economics. I've been a BPI board member uh, since 2017, and was elected VP of Professional Development during our last elections. Now, over the course of my tenure, I've uh, relaunched the BPI flagship mentoring program, introduced a second USIP mentoring pilot program, hosted uh, many professional development webinars on topics like personal branding, interviewing mental health, and developed Think and Drinks. So these are events that cover topical themes like the impact of climate change on the diaspora, human trafficking, you know, or even the future of work. So as a candidate for this 2022 board, I intend to carry on with our strong record of producing, you know, cutting edge programming, really to help our members achieve their professional goals in their respective fields. Be that by polishing their resumes or hearing, you know, the latest on how artificial intelligence is gonna change our profession. I bring several strengths to the board, including a long history of event planning, a large network to draw on, experience getting both into and then through tough graduate programs, and a demonstrated belief in lifting as I climb, as my BPIA mentees can attest to. Finally and centrally, I have a deep commitment to our mission of increasing the number of Black professionals in leadership. My vision for BPIA's future is very, very bright. I see us continuing to grow in size and strength, expanding our membership to the highest ranks of the profession and across the world. Uh, in particular, I see us really becoming the go-to for sourcing appointees for presidential I'm... administrations, 
ICS launching BPI student groups at the high school, college, I'm and graduate level, and really. Thank you very much to Dr. Hatsuelo. We are now going to hear from three of our candidates for the Vice President for Business and Economic Development. We have Suli Kenyatta, we have Kolo Kugler, and the incumbent, Cal Williams. We will start with Suli Kenyatta. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a little bit earlier here on the West Coast. So I know it's evening time over there. Uh, I've gotten a chance to meet a couple people, but I'm actually a newer member of BPIA. Uh, so just for those that uh, I, I haven't got a chance to meet yet, my name is Suleiman Kenyatta. Uh, I went to school from Morehouse College. I'm currently the policy manager at the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, so I joined BPIA earlier this year and it really was inspirational in terms of wanting to get more involved, uh, meet other participants who are in the organization and wanna just play a bigger part in helping the programming element. Uh, in terms of for the economic development lens, I think one of the big initiatives that is really ongoing right now that I've noticed uh, has really been this equity issue. Uh, and I think it plays a big role in kind of bringing up the opportunities and making those pipeline connections with our community, uh, whether that's within workforce development, industry culture development, but also working through the public and private sector. Uh, I think the biggest strength that I come or that I can bring to the board is really like my intellectual curiosity. Uh, really hopeful for the opportunity to learn from all the members, but as well as just continue to continue gaining gaining skills for my own personal uh, personal use as well. Uh, and I think that the biggest uh, the idea of BPI in my mind is I think that the hybrid uh, models can like really expand the organization as a whole, bring in new members of myself who are outside of the Washington D.C. area. Um, and just really able to leverage the breadth of experience uh, and uh, just, just the experience that the network has overall. Thank you so much, Suli. The next candidate is Kolo Kugler. Kolo? Kolo, if you're with us, please mute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hi, sorry, it's very early where I am. <laughs> So good evening and good morning who are everybody who's on the east of the United States. Um, my name is Kulafela Kugler and until recently I was in, an international, I'm still an international trade lawyer, but I was working um, in Geneva, Switzerland um, in an organization that supports developing countries in the WTO and trade matters. I think my biggest strength that I would bring to the board is providing some international exposure to BPIA. Um, over the course of my career in the past 10 years, I've been working in Europe and in Switzerland, and I've created a very deep network, network of, of professionals in the field who are looking for different perspectives and looking to grow diversity in the field. There's very few of us in this field. I'm one of very few uh, Black lawyers who are working in international trade law, and I would like that to change. And I think we've come to a very important uh, standpoint in now in you know in life where we see the DG of the WTO who is a black woman. I'm very new to the organization. I've been a member since April 2020, but I've already been quite involved. I've planned a panel on WTO and the state of play in international trade affairs, and I've also inter been interviewed for BPI chats in February 2021. I think, like most people that have spoken so far, my vision for BPI is that it becomes the go-to organization for people of color wish to network or gain opportunities in the field of international trade, but also for people who are looking for suitably qualified professionals of color uh, to, you know, put into, you know, the appointments of the highest, um, highest grade. And I really hope to leverage the opportunity that BPI provides um, to make sure that we get uh, black people or people of color into and the highest level um, in, our, in our field. Thank you so much, Kolo. Thank you so much. I told you, Mrs. Titi is on top of it. So please, I hope no one's in the, uh, offended, but she is on top of these time limits. So thank you, Michelle. Thank so our you. next- <laughs> I learned how to do this on my iPhone this afternoon. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> our next candidate is the incumbent, Cal Williams. Cal, please unmute yourself and share our, your thoughts with us. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure being here. Um, a little bit about my background, very quick, quickly. I was a Peace Corps volunteer, uh, two assignments, Niger and Morocco. 
I joined the Chase Manhattan Bank, went through the management training program, worked primarily in international overseas, Geneva, Paris, and London for the most part. I headed the Africa office in Paris, and then I was in charge of strategic planning for the bank in Africa. I joined the IMF, uh, worked in the USED's office, and eventually joined the staff, uh, where I unexpectedly stayed for 22 years. I've been a member of BPIA since I retired from the IMF in 2004. Um, and I must say, I've been very, very impressed with this organization. I did not know it existed before. Um, but when I joined, we had a very dynamic board uh, led by people who are the founders of BPIA. And they inspired me. So my vision of BPIA is to continue the work that they started. Um, a couple of things that I think I had contribute to my stress. Number one, as we go out to sell BPIA, as a number of people have noted, BPIA is, has the potential to be the go-to organization. Most recently, I met with the Senior Vice President of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and he was just thrilled because he felt he did not know an organization like BPIA existed. We have to be able to present a professional face when we talk to people like this. Uh, the other strength I have is, at one point, I did a strategic plan for BPIA. Um, we had some internal strife and there was a change of leadership. Ambassador Stanfield took over in 2013, 2014. But before then, we had conceived of a plan to position BPIA to be the organization that inspires leadership. Have one last thing, mentoring. I'm pleased to have been a mentor and I think my success with the mentees attests Fine. to my ability to work with young people. Hope you vote for me. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cal. Cal Williams, our incumbent. While our presenters are talking with you, please, if you have some questions that you'd like to put in the chat, we may be able to get to your questions later on if there's still time. So you can start actually just putting your questions in your chat and we may and may not be able to get to them. So thank you very much. So our next candidate is Danny Williams. He is the running for the Vice President for Education and Exchange. You can roll his video, thank you. My name is Danny Evans and I am the CEO and founder of Millennium Envelopes. I am excited to be nominated for BPIA's Vice President of Education and Exchange. Unfortunately, I am unable to make a live presentation. However, I will join the meeting later to answer your questions. Through my experiences working for the government and nonprofit organizations, I have an in-depth understanding of what it takes to achieve the goals BPIA has for its board and members. I have spearheaded cultural and educational exchanges in Asia and Africa. I have strong connections and valuable resources in the public and private sectors to raise funds, attract a larger diverse audience, and upstart new programs for partners and BPI. I have raised over $30,000 for inner city high school students to study abroad, mm -hmm. mentor the future leaders of Africa, and bilingually train Chinese and US officials in cross-cultural communication. Lastly, I have worked closely with senior officials, including an ambassador and a senator, and I am well equipped to deal with high pressure situations and going beyond expectations to ensure that members, partners, guests, and the board members are pleased with the results. Thanks for considering me for the Vice President for Education and Exchange position. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. Thank you to Danny Williams. Thank you so much. The right next candidate will be the treasurer. That's McGrath Thomas. McGrath, unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. Good evening. It's my pleasure to greet you. And I am currently serving on the BPIA board as assistant treasurer. And tonight present myself 
to you as a nominee for the treasurer's position. Someone has to keep track of the money, so no better person than me. I have a long background in history working in international affairs and always get stopped counting the money. I keep trying to run away from it, so I must be pretty good if they keep giving it to me. So I have been the BPIA assistant treasurer for the last two years, preparing financial reports and records, uh, presenting it to the board, helping to do budgets, uh, trying to ensure that the bills are paid on time, and also uh, looking forward to uh, developing additional policies and procedures. I first joined the organization back around 1899, uh, around 1990, and worked along with the founding leader, Barbara Patterson, went overseas, worked for 18 or more years, working in international affairs with Peace Corps, National Council of Negro Women, and uh, again, keeping records, uh, making sure that the books and records are, are, are in order. I have worked on the Finance Committee and the Governance Committee with BPIA. And my in the future, if elected treasurer, I will continue to work to improve the financial record keeping uh, and ensure that all of our reports are filed with our government agencies as appropriate for keeping so that we would be able to, to uh, withstand audits and uh, grant main requirements if necessary. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much, McGrath. I really appreciate your comments. The next candidate is the assistant treasurer position. Lassini Sharif is running for that position. He's not able to join us this evening, but I do want to refer you to his bio, which will be available in the members only section of the website. All of our candidates have listed both their bios, their photos, and their thoughts about BPIA's future. So please feel free to reference those documents while you're pondering about your candidates and your choice. The next candidate is the candidate for secretary, and that is Christian Chung. Christian has shared with us his video. So we'll please. Roll his video. I now work as an analyst for the government and uh, uh, focusing mostly on the Middle East. And in my job, in my last previous assignments, I've been able to uh, serve in a number of roles that included being the executive assistant to senior U.S. national security officials. Um, and so I really was looking for a match in my background and expertise on what I can bring to bear and serve the BPIA community um, in fulfilling its mission of expanding opportunity, networking, mentorship, uh, and um, the, uh, uh, the presence of uh, African Americans uh, from uh, all parts of the country and the world. Um, in international affairs and foreign policy. Uh, my job focus in particular on uh, not only just the nitty gritty um, taking and distribution of notes and internal communications um, from uh, meetings and uh, other uh, deliberations at the highest levels of the executive branch, but also included a lot of intangible uh, 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 the need for intangible skills like uh, communicating sensitive issues uh, and also just helping uh, uh, senior leaders execute their vision and making sure that uh, communication was a two-way street, that everyone was heard, and really that the organization was able to function on all, on all cylinders, particularly uh, in the time of COVID. So I think uh, leveraging that experience uh, and my overall just the skills and lessons that I learned um, would be a perfect fit for the secretary position for the BPI board of directors. And uh, hopefully I um, uh, will be able to work all of you, work, work, work with all of you over the coming years. Time. Thanks so much. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much to Christian. We have two individuals running for the assistant secretary 
We have Yannick Gill and we have Brianna Stanton. We'll start with Yannick. Yannick, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. Hello, everyone. My name is Yannick Gill, and I am a legislative counsel for Representative Dean at the U.S. House of Representatives here in Washington, D.C. I'm a graduate of Howard University School of Law, and I've been working with BPIA since 2015 after a panel where I saw a Black American attorney working in international affairs. It opened up my mind to something that I didn't think I could even do with a legal degree in the United States. And that's what I think of when I think about BPIA. Uh, those who are doing the work, uplifting those behind them. And I'm excited at the prospect to do the same. In my few years working uh, within the field, I've worked in the nonprofit space, uh, the international governmental space, and for both this government and international governments. And that's experience that I hope to share with those behind me. I do think it's very possible to lift those behind me as I climb, which is why I was excited to uh, not only benefit from the mentorship of all of you here, uh, but also join the mentorship program with BPIA, which has been incredibly fulfilling to help those currently in the system, or currently uh, current members of BPIA uh, do the things that uh, they didn't think were possible, much like I did just a few years back. When I think about where the organization can go, uh, I don't want to just echo what everyone has said. I think we can add to what is already happening. When I think about some of the seminars, we can add different regions. I often am looking for uh, my expertise, which is Latin American and Caribbean, presented within that space, diversifying some of the forums. I also think about additional ways in which we could engage with those who are students, whether it be uh, connecting to Black student associations or student government associations, HBCUs. I think continuing to add to things that already work would be the best way for BPA to continue to grow. I am excited by uh, the prospect of joining you all and will continue to work with you, uh, whether as the assistant secretary Hi. with the SLEE. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yannick. I appreciate your comments. Our next candidate for the assistant secretary, we have Brianna Stanton. Brianna, please unmute yourself and share with us. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Brianna Stanton, and I'm running for the BPIA Assistant Secretary. A lot of my professional background includes being a subject matter expert in international trade compliance, supporting the US Navy across the globe, as well as being a consultant to the US Department of State's Bureau of and political military affairs. I joined BPIA just earlier this year, but so far it's been a very rewarding experience for me, attending various workshops and networking meetings, including the BPIA career fair that was just like two weeks ago, I think, and it was very well done. In my time with BPIA, I've had the opportunity to be introduced to professionals of all levels. And I think that the biggest strength I can bring to this role is my experience with organization, note-taking and completing administrative tasks that I've had to do thus far in juggling an, an, a portfolio regarding international trade across the globe. And additionally, I feel like this role would allow me to learn more about the organization and how it runs and operates in order to find more areas of opportunity that we've all been discussing thus far this evening. And on that note, I feel like I see BPIA's future in kind of a three-pronged segment. Uh, the first would be really implementing a type of professional development and professional training element in order to continue to uplift our current membership. Uh, the second would be becoming a major implementer and being at the forefront of the new and improved diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative that is spreading like wildfire throughout so many organizations. And the third would be having stronger and more inclusive engagement on our BPIA website that includes more highlights and programs from some of our sponsors. And I look forward to the possibility of representing BPIA as Assistant Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate that. Our next group of candidates are the members at large. We have two categories. There are those who will be posted for one year and there are those who will be serving for two years. So we'll start with those who will be posted for one year. So that includes Clifton Jeffrey, Ambassador Stephen McGann, who is an incumbent, Eunice Reddick, who is currently our secretary, 
and Earl Yates, who is an incumbent member at large. So I'm gonna open it up and let Jeffrey start. Clifton Jeffrey, please unmute yourself and share with us. Thank you, good evening. My name is Cliff Jeffrey. I'm a, a diplomatic security special agent with the State Department. I've been in the Foreign Service for 15 years. And my sole reason for wanting to be a part of this board is to uh, further students and further the mission and to get uh, resources that, that I didn't receive uh, as a young uh, Tougaloo College graduate uh, coming out of Mississippi. Uh, looking at a one-year appointment, uh, I'm getting ready to head back overseas to Cairo, Egypt uh, next year. And looking at a one-year appointment, the, what I would like to accomplish is one, I would like to further our mentorship program uh, where mentorship is automatic upon joining the, uh, the organization. Uh, to do that, I think that we really need a, a clear survey of, of what our membership entails. Uh, how many people do we have from DOD? How many people and who are the people that we have from State Department? Who do we, who do we have in academia? And pairing those individuals up immediately upon joining the organization. So pairing practitioners, active, uh, active practitioners up with, uh, with students who are interested in those areas and also uh, targeting our membership. Uh, it's right now it's difficult to tell how many, you know, how many people do we have in these spaces? If we know, then we know where to target. I would like to see a, a hard uh, data-driven metrics on, on, on our recruitment and, and, and full efforts on, on recruiting in areas where we might be light uh, with regards to, uh, to active part, uh, to, to practitioners. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, I would love to institute something like a uh, members only fireside chat. Uh, when I think back about my experience, I didn't know anybody in the State Department. I didn't know anybody in the Foreign Service. And I think that while passing, uh, giving people information about opportunities, one thing, I think that uh, having individuals who you can tap on regularly as a resource uh, is going to take students much further. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Cliff. Thank you so much for your comments. Our next candidate is the um, Ambassador Stephen McGann. I don't believe he was able to join us tonight. Ambassador McGann, are you with us this evening? If not, we will ask you to refer to the members only section where you will have access to the ambassador's bio. The next candidate for the one year position is Ambassador Eunice Reddick. Eunice, please mute yourself, unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Very happy to be here and happy to see all of you. Um, and I'm very excited about uh, running uh, for an at-large position on the board. Um, I've uh, been on the board actually for the last few months filling in as a assistant secretary. And, and, and again, I, I'm enthusiastic about remaining on the board because I think um, BPIA is doing great, great work. And I think it is the lead organization in uh, promoting uh, leadership of uh, African Americans and people of, of color in the fields, the various fields in uh, international affairs. Um, I retired a few years ago from over uh, 30 years in uh, the foreign service and uh, having served through senior ranks into ambassadorial positions in uh, in, in Africa, but also service in, uh, in uh, East Asia with a number of assignments back in Washington. And the assignments I found most satisfying were those that involved uh, uh, people to people exchanges, working closely in uh, educational areas, uh, especially as a diplomat in uh, residence. And uh, I spent a year at, at Howard University reaching out to uh, not only students um, but young professionals, vets uh, that might be interested in careers in international affairs in Delaware, Maryland, uh, Virginia, and uh, West Virginia. And, um, you know, throughout my career, I have focused on, on uh, mentoring because I felt it was important to, to give back or help those who um, might need uh, the boost or the helping hand or the encourage it, encouragement to make it. Uh, into mid-level ranks and then senior ranks as well, where we know where we know there are so few uh, people of color uh, represented. So um, my goal is to bring my enthusiasm, uh, my experience to the board, uh, focus on accountability, um, but also work to bring in more members and more institutional members, in particular, to form a network. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ambassador Riddick. And thank you, Ms. TT. Thank you very much. The next candidate for the one-year position member at large is our incumbent, Earl Yates. Earl, please unmute your share, yourself and share with us. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, it's my pleasure to have the opportunity to come before you to uh, propose, request, uh, encourage that you vote for me to um, to accept me appointed to uh, be elected to uh, this appointment as one year on the board as, as an at-large member, at large member. I'm currently serving as an at-large member. I have been with BPA for since about 1990. I was the second president uh, following our founder, Barbara Patterson, Patterson from uh, 93 to about 96 and have been in and out on the board uh, until this year, uh, serving as a member at large and very importantly, being appointed to the position of chair of the Institutional Members and Partners Committee, which the board brought into, a be, brought into being by, by approving an proposal that, I, proposal that I put forth because I felt that, and I think it's proven out that the strength of BPIA can be maximized. Uh, I mean, we can, uh, as they say, punch way before our weight, way above our weight by joining with the resources of other organizations and what they do. And through the outreach that we've been able to do and the committee that was established uh, is to bring in a number of organizations who are fellow travelers with us uh, and who can add to not just our, our, our membership individually and organizationally, but, but to our geographic reach. I think we can go beyond being a national organization to being uh, certainly global, uh, virtually and otherwise. And I think that as my vision for BPIA is that it really is um, I think it'll go beyond what we can imagine these days. Uh, the last two years have shown us that if we look, if we, if go, looking back a few years ago, if we look forward to where we are now, we would not have seen the possibility of that to realize. Uh, I'd like the opportunity to continue that capacity building uh, in that role. Thank you so much, Earl Yates. I appreciate your sharing. Our next group of candidates will be the member at large position who serves two years. We have several candidates and I will list them and then introduce each one, one at a time. Running for the member at large two-year position, we have Ambassador Cynthia Akute, Alexandria Baker Hadara, Yvonne Hubbard, Sonia Negron, Nigel Thorpe, Evan Webb, and Brian Wells. We will start with Ambassador Cynthia Akute, who is not able to join us this evening, you will be able to find her bio, credentials, and thoughts about our future on the members only section of the website. So please refer to that for more details when you're voting. The second candidate for the member at large two year position is Alexandria Baker Hadara. Alexandria, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts with our organization. Okay, thank you so much for the introduction. I'm very honored and thrilled to be invited to be um, to join your join this election. Um, I started off my career at the State Department of Foreign Service, serving in Mexico and Washington D.C., and then got an entrepreneurial bug and started um, two startups in the cosmetic industry um, in Honduras, Rwanda. What I bring to BPIA is my strong entrepreneurial experience and my foreign policy back, background. I want to be a BPI board member at large because I have, to, I have a vision to help expand membership and influencing global affairs. The values of BPIA align with my own professional goals and I wanna help more black professionals in um, international affairs grow their own careers and just gain the expertise they need to um, to really do well in your own careers. I also want to um, help advocate for more black voices in the US foreign policy circles. Um, as a foreign, former diplomat and business owner, I deliver results. I've shown that because I am also the co-host of BPIA's first podcast, which is called Global Take. We've interviewed ambassadors, um, diplomats, and also great international experts uh, black professionals in, in this field across the world in Washington, D.C. It has gained a lot of notor um, notoriety and people are really um, excited about this podcast and it's also contributed to the growing membership um, base that we have at BPA as well as our social media audience. And I'm willing to do the work. Um, I have a, a strong vision. I decided to join the 
podcast series, and now we are flourishing. We're going into our second season, and that's what I think you need as a board member, someone who's willing to do the work, someone who's entrepreneurial, and someone who has a vision a to take, take the organization to the next level. And uh, I definitely want to help this organization just be like that center point where people are um, I'm people becoming part of this. <laughs> Sorry. But thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much, Alexandria. We really appreciate your comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the next individual running for office is our incumbent, Yvonne Hubbard. Yvonne, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. Good, after, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are listening to my voice. Um, I've been a member of BPIA for the past decade. Um, I, I would say that I'm, I believe in BPIA because it's the foundation of how it started. Uh, the mission of the organization has always been, even before now, we are all so excited about DE&I, but that has been the overall mission and goal of BPIA in the beginning. I wish I had had a BPIA when I was new in my career. Uh, BPIA has done, and I keep hearing people say, we want to be the go-to. I say we already are one of the go-tos. We want to become the premier go-to for BPIA. We have done tremendous things. We are growing. We have need new ideas. People have asked me, what do I bring to BPIA? And I got a job by making this statement. I know people. I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that's what you need in BPIA. We have to network. We can want to do things, but we have to be able to have people that are in different places at different levels to bring people in, to make it known. My vision is that we have more connections, that we do more outreach, that we utilize our connections that we have developed over the past two years. You utilize them in a different way. We are a non-paid board. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying, I hear everybody saying, Earl is going to be calling you or anybody else, the president is going to be calling you. And it's a lot of work. I'm here okay. to do the job and I would welcome all of you, any one of you that become a board member to roll your sleeves up because there's a lot to do. Cynthia. I am stepping in for Cynthia. She has a little technical difficulty. Uh, and our next person who will introduce themselves is Sonia Negron. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Please unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia Negron. I was born and raised in New York. And when I went to a school, I didn't understand anyone. No one understood me since I didn't speak the English language. So I say that to say that we are all a product of our environment and that actually shapes what we do in the future and how we are determined to overcome challenges. So currently I'm a grants management specialist at the Federal Emergency Management Agency in Chicago for region five. And also since the new administration came in, in January, I was deployed as a COVID-19 vaccine equity planning specialist to make sure we were going to underserved communities and especially to the folks that were being affected most by COVID-19. Um, I also helped in the past um, um, reach farmers in the Latin American and Caribbean, trying to especially get them out of the COVID-19 situation and embrace training and digital training. And so uh, when I say this is because what I'm trying to get at is that what we need to do is like someone had said before is, make sure that we do reach many folks area, not just like uh, where we are and where we're used to here in the US, but I know we've reached across the globe. But some of the things I wanna do for BPIA is have uh, country specific forums where we can take advantage of other members skills in a specific region or country and learn from each other. And if we don't have that, we can find some of who has those expertise in case we want to actually move in our current role or move into a different role, knowing more about what's going on in Latin America or in Caribbean, because there are a lot of folks who don't know. I wish that this org that I knew about this organization years ago. Um, and there's folks that have uh, employee resource groups who are specific. There's Latino, Hispanic, there's LGBTQ, there's um, black 
uh, employee resource groups at places where I work and who don't specifically know about BPIA. So what I like to do also is encourage more ethnically diverse members from either Afro-Puerto Ricans, Afro-Cubans. Um, and so that's what I bring to the table is expanding on what we have now. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. And I do apologize, I lost power. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone just keeping the show moving. So our next candidate for the member at large to your position is Nigel Tharp. Nigel, are you with us this evening? I know that he wasn't quite sure if he could make it this evening, but Nigel, if you're with us, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. I don't see his name, so I'm assuming he was Yeah, not I'm here. I'm oh, here. I'm wonderful, sorry. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Yes. Nigel, please share with yes. us. Yes. Um, I like to go over the, uh, the different group of questions that um, I like to answer. And those questions are um, as listed. Um, one of the features and um, abilities that I could bring to the table of my experience, I come from a collective background um, that does include um, international engagement uh, for both, not only diplomacy, but also for entertainment. As a former um, US ambassador slash professional athlete for the NFL, um, engaging in with different um, groups in different nations is very important to have that cohesiveness that I can bring to the table. What's unique about being an athlete and an ambassador, you get unique insights and viewpoints and a unique perspective being a athlete working on that level. And what that brings is um, understanding of not only the game itself, but how different cultures interchange. And um, I should say possibly, um, it's more so of an opening of minds between two different nations that understand the differences of each other through the participating sport. So one of those features um, was very important that I learned growing up and also playing professionally is that there are different times where different conflicts happen between two different nations or maybe a third possible nation the sport itself could actually bring those groups together into an understanding in a more of a commodity of, of practice of the sport itself and far as other activities within entertainment. In seconds. So if I could end it right there, you know, just for starters, I could go on and on, but um, engagement and diplomacy, um, experience of different Hi. backgrounds that I found very important. So thank you. Thank you so much, Nigel. We really appreciate your thoughts. Thanks a lot. So the next individual running for member at large to your position is Evan Webb. Evan, if you're with us, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Good evening, BPIA. My name is Charles Evan Webb. Uh, everyone calls me my middle name, Evan. And I'm coming to you live from London, England, where it's the early hours of the morning here. But I'm honored to be considered for a board large position, and I uh, hope that this in some small way shows my commitment to the board if elected. So I'm a graduate of Morehouse College, completed my master's degree at the London School of Economics. I'm currently working at Commodities International, which is the largest USAID contractor. Uh, and I want to join the board because I'm passionate about international affairs, and I want to pass on the same opportunities that BPIA gave to me when I was a master's student onto other uh, Black men and women who are considering or I've already chosen international affairs as their career path. So uh, what are my strengths? Before transitioning into international development, my background was as head of operations for an adventure travel company based in China, where I lived for six years. Uh, when I started, we were a small startup operating tours in just China. But uh, by the time I left, we were operating tours in nine countries throughout Asia. Uh, so I was in the business of getting things done, working with lots of different types of people from different cultures uh, to accomplish goals. And I think my background is one of the things that sets me apart from some of the other candidates here today. Uh, the fact that I come from the tourism industry, I believe that allows me to have a bit of a unique perspective and uh, that ties into my vision for the future of BPIA. I wanna see BPIA uh, back to uh, pre-COVID, doing all the things that already does so well, while also taking up new opportunities, engaging in new industries like tourism and hospitality, for example, uh, engaging places outside of DC. Uh, you know, I can't help to think about all those years I lived in China and never knew about BPIA. 
and how much of an advantage it would have been to engage with BPIA uh, while I was overseas. Uh, and I think that through social media, through Zoom events like we're doing here. And second. Uh, and the podcast that BPI has, we're in a great position to do that. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll finish there and pass it on to the next candidate. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, Evan. Thank you so much. I appreciate your comments. The next candidate and the last candidate that we have for the member at large position is Brian Wells. Brian, please unmute yourself and share your thoughts with us. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Brian Wells. I am a proud member of BPIA uh, since 2000. Um, I am the president and founder of the Daniel Initiative, which is a government relations, strategic communications, and social impact firm. Uh, we have the pleasure of running seven uh, national public policy tables. Um, and then I'm also the proud executive director of our policy fellowship arm, um, which is called the TDI, TDI SET Project. Um, and our fellows include even those uh, not just here in the United States, but abroad. Uh, my vision for uh, this organization really stems from my professional experience prior to TDI um, and establishing it. I was a Hill staffer uh, with the expertise in national security policy. Um, and being the only one, knowing what it is to be not just the only Black person, but the only person of color, um, it helped spur on a lot of my work to provide access and opportunities for all. So my vision is to help develop this organization into a community that is equipped to service all of our membership from entry level all the way to retirement. It is important that our board not only create, but highlight these opportunities for all of us to be able to benefit and as well lean in um, and help pull up other people. Uh, specifically, I hope to make this happen as a board member by being able to develop a partnership position on the board. I think that partnership must go just beyond uh, simply the money transactions. And we ought to encourage and, and continue this conversation of ensuring that our partners share our values that we become a resource hub on diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, not just here, but again, with corporations, governments, and business entities abroad as well. And that we solidify BPIA's voice, um, not just here, but again, globally, to ensure that we are speaking on all of today's current issues in ways that are relevant and beneficial to our membership. Thank you, thank you, Brian. thank you so much. When we first started our session tonight, I told you that we have a very impressive slate of candidates. Now you can see, I wasn't kidding. Now these people have a lot to say. They have some really great ideas and I embrace moving forward with Im implementing some of these ideas from both our incumbents and our new candidates. Fantastic. This is the PPIA family and this is what you are a part of. So I congratulate you all for sharing your thoughts, for your enthusiasm, your inventiveness and working with us to move this organization forward. We have a fantastic history and we're moving forward and we have a lot to offer. So thank you again for sharing your thoughts. And hopefully if we have time at the very end, you'll get a chance to meet and greet some of the candidates on a more intimate level, but we're gonna move forward with our agenda tonight. And the nominating committee was presented with several questions that we plan to pose to our candidates. If you have some questions that you'd like to share, please feel free to put those in the chat. Not sure we can get to all of them tonight, but we'll try to address it. If not tonight, maybe in the meet and greet that follows this session. So the first question that we wanna to pose to our candidates. Over the past 30 years, BPIA has focused on several core areas, business and economic development, professional development and mentoring, education and exchange, and networking and outreach. BPIA offers career fairs, conferences, professional mentoring, workshops, networking, leadership forums, and outreach through a strong social media presence. Where would you like to see BPIA heading in the next several years? I pose that to our candidates, and I'd like to call on a few who might have some really provocative answers for us. Uh, Ambassador Eunice Reddick, have any thoughts about this? Uh, you know, I can expand on some of the points that have, or key points that have uh, already, you know, been mentioned by candidates that I think are going to be crucial over over the short term and, and even the long term. But you know, it's it's the network we create institutionally 
um, that our, our members are going to look to. It's the network that uh, provides the, sort of the pro professional training, the career support, and we hope uh, jobs as well, you know, the career, the real career opportunities. So I think this is where, um, you know, BPI should be focused is expanding that network. And this is an opportune time because we hope private sector, government, you know, they are taking diversity and inclusion seriously. You know, this is, this is not the first time diversity has been out there. We've been dealing with this for, for years, but now there's no excuse that we don't know anybody out there. We don't know who's going to meet, uh, you know, the requirements, the, the educational training. BPIA is in the lead and BPIA has members who have the, uh, the background, the interests, and the uh, enthusiasm and can perform. So I think this is what the uh, BPIA should really take advantage of over, over, the, next, over the next few years. <clears throat> I think it's important for the members um, as well, because uh, again, I think members will want to be looking at themselves, refining, honing their skills, sort of the how-tos and the how-tos, um, you know, not only, you know, include uh, interview skills. I mean, things that uh, BPIA has addressed before in, in chats and uh, think and drinks, you know, where it's also topical. What are those cutting edge issues, whether it's immigration or, um, trafficking, climate change, addressing the issues as well. So this is going to be important for BPIA. Um, it, the organization has done this, but we need to do more. And I think the interest is there. Uh, one thing coming out of, uh, if there's anything good that's come out of the pandemic, it's, it's the, the, the use of technology to bring people together virtually. And uh, I was so happy to see after I came back from overseas and um, became involved with BPIA again, how much the organization has used technology, uh, also social media to expand outreach, bring people in, in ways that could not have been done before uh, through uh, in-person events. West Coast, I mean, I remember last week at the, you know, the career fair just a few days ago, uh, speaking to a young woman who, um, you know, is participating from, from Paris. So the, the outreach through technology is going to be uh, important. Uh, and that expands the, the audience. Um, Eunice, I'm yeah. sorry to break in, but I noticed in the chat that Cynthia has said that uh, the question was asked if the responses would be timed. Alexandria asked that. Uh, and Cynthia said two minutes. So I think we have to uh, close your response and go on okay. to the next person. All right, thank you. Though. Thank you very much. Very provocative comments that you've made, Ambassador. So thank you very much for sharing that. I appreciate your thoughts. Um, yeah, just one, I'm sorry, just to close one, one point. Sure. As we look at that expanded audience, um, I uh, recall I, I spent a year working with the UNA Association of the USA on a model UN at Cardoza High School in uh, Washington, DC. It was the first time they ever had a model UN. Something to consider the possibility of reaching down into the high school level where where knowledge really, I mean, it's an opportunity, an audience that really doesn't get touched as high school students. So something for BPIA to consider. Thank you, fantastic. And one of our other candidates also has a interest in working with high school students. So I think that's mm -hmm. a wonderful synergy and a way for us to move forward, an audience for us to reach. So thank you very much for your thoughts. Clifton Jeffrey, might you also have some thoughts about this particular question? Please unmute yourself. Clifton Jeffrey, do you also have some thoughts about this particular question? Uh, yes, I was going to say uh, definitely. I in the next seven years, uh, I would like I would like to see a vibrant uh, BPIA. Uh, I would like to see you know membership uh, doubled, uh, and I would like to see a thriving mentorship program. Once again, you know this organization was founded to put uh, African Americans in these spaces, and I think that the metrics and the process for doing that are important. Uh, when I talk about the metrics, I mean, I'm talking about things like how many BPI members do we know that have gone on to obtain employment in, in, our, in our respective areas uh, through you know, their affiliation with BPIA. 
when I'm talking metrics, I'm talking about how many people do we know that are members from various international affairs or organizations. Uh, I think that those things are important. Uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, once again, fireside, you know, I would love to see something like a, a fireside chat where all BPI board members uh, are contributing to that, you know, uh, throughout the year, maybe a monthly fireside chat where that gives our members, uh, particularly those young professionals and students, access to BPIA members who can put them and help them get to the places that they're trying to go. Uh, you know, as, as a young student, uh, I, well, as a young agent, I, I noticed that a lot of our, uh, a lot of our, my colleagues, they knew people who were in the State Department. They had brothers who were in the State Department, best friends were in the State Department. And what I realized over 15 years is they had access to people who could give them knowledge that they could then use to, to, to break into these areas. And so that's, uh, that's where I hope to see BPI uh, in that, uh, in, in the next uh, number of years. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And our second question is? Cynthia, before you move on, Brianna Stanton's hand is raised and I think she wants to respond as well as Alexandria Maloney, if we have time to receive. Okay, I see a lot more hands are coming up. So uh, Alexandria, Alexandria Baker's hand is raised as well. So. Uh, do you have time in the schedule for these three candidates? That's going to give six minutes. All right. So, yes, we can accommodate. Uh, uh, Rihanna's so hands was raised first, Maloney second, and Baker was third. That's what I see so far. Hi, I did want to jump in and say that Alexandria's hand was raised before mine, and so was Brian. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. Those, <laughs> I don't want to so jump in line. Apologies, apologies on. Uh, then whoever hand, whose hand was first? Alexandria. Okay. Then it was actually Brianna's hand and then Alexandria and then Brianna and then Alexandria Baker. That's what I thought I saw, but uh, I'm stepping back into my place in the background. <laughs> No, no problem. This is Brian. And, um, you know, thank you. I will say, and I'll keep it in 60 seconds, and I'll also answer a question that I saw in the chat. Um, my vision for BPIA really is to streamline and strengthen this idea of partnership. Um, partnership, again, must go past just general transactions financially. You cannot give your way to equity, right? It means ensuring that we are holding our partners accountable to make sure that BPIA members have a not just a job opportunity, but a culture where they can stay in those spaces. Um, I also believe that we should continue to uh, promote in these spaces um, a lot of this mentorship and development to make sure, you know, I've had the pleasure of serving on the communications committee um, and helping to spearhead the policy communications to make sure that members know where they can navigate opinion editorials and some of these other spaces to express their voices and really build their resume from early on to be able to move up the pipeline and we can make them marketable and service that stage that propels them. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, the next speaker, is that Alexandria? Yes. yes. Yes, it was. Oh, I was I so just as a point for the technology. So those who raise their hand first will be in the upper left hand corner. And then as it goes to the right, that's the person who raises their hand next. And okay. then I put in the chat for candidates uh, of different generations who may be trying to do the raise hand function. You can do that through the reaction button or type in the chat. I would like to respond to this question or physically raise your hand at this time. So I'll go ahead and answer this. Uh, the last question. So I'd have three actionable and measurable objectives as BPI president. One is grow our community by continuing to produce high impact programming, growing our membership, fostering a positive and welcoming, and most importantly, a responsive community environment, developing city chapters, campus chapters, expert area working groups, a more direct approach from the board to engage with our membership. The second thing, grow and stabilize our financial security, formally establishing a grants and fundraising designated officer, a strategic plan, attempting to host a fundraising gala during this administration. And then lastly, my final objective will be to grow BPIA's voice. You're gonna keep hearing me say it all night, growing our voice on the national stage, 
it will be my mission to establish BPIA as the premier organization at the center of issues pertaining to our community. So engaging institutions of power and increasing BPIA's voice and visibility in our field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brianna? Thank you. I'll hop in next. I mentioned this earlier during my introduction. One thing I really see for BPIA's future is the establishment of an official train professional training element that will pour into our current members. And what I mean by this is that I feel like we all understand that there are several hard skills and certifications that are essentially seen as gold stars on your resume. And some things that may come to mind when you think of that are the ones regarding pro program management and product project management, like PMP, Agile, Scrum, if you have that on your resume, it's a definite, it's a gold star, it's a plus. And I would like to see BPIA either facilitate, offer, or sponsor these trainings on a regular increment, not just specifically in program management, but in order to like I said earlier, pour into our membership. And as Ms. Uh, Eunice Reddick, I believe, said earlier, we've had the benefit over the last year and a half to really familiarize ourselves with this virtual environment meeting and doing you know, work <laughs> through the computer. So I feel like it's definitely our time to capitalize on that. That way we can even offer virtual trainings in order to expand to that global audience, that national audience that we're looking to capture. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brianna. And Alexandria Baker. Yes, thanks so much for um, for the introduction. So yes, one of, so what I would like to see in the next seven years um, as a BPI member and potential board member is for BPI to be like the hub of foreign policy experts as a co-host on the podcast, Global Take. I have interviewed so many Black experts from ambassadors. I just got finished speaking to um, the executive director of, um, of Undocu Black, um, who wrote an op-ed on the Haitian migrant crisis on, in CNN, on CNN. And I think this is like a really great point where we can really um, hone in the expertise and be the hub. I also think that we should have like um, a policy chain. We have been working on that in the comms team with Brian Wells and others to try to like formulate policies um, that hit home and will be able for, for BPIA to be recognized as um, offering expertise in the foreign policy space. So those are definitely potentials. Of course, membership, growing our membership. We have people from the State Department, people from um, various organizations, USTR, et cetera. But um, the international affairs space is very vast and expansive and it goes beyond just government and NGOs. So we can de definitely tap into the private sector and I'm willing to do that and help others um, on the way and help and help that through the B as a BPIA board member. Thank you so much. And I see Yannick's hand raised, Yannick. Yes, I just wanted to answer two specific questions. One, were, what were specific ways to grow membership? Uh, and I, I mentioned this before, but I, it bears repeating. We don't need to recreate the wheel. There are existing Black organizations where there is a need to show a pathway, whether it be the student government associations of existing HBCUs, whether it be the Black student alliances on campuses across the country, we need to reach out to the groups already doing the work to show them different ways to participate within international affairs that go beyond uh, government and the nonprofit space. International trade exists, international economics, reaching out to those who already exist. I think bridging those partnerships with universities is incredibly important. And as far as what I've done outside of uh, as a member, the PowerPoint that you'll see on the 23rd was something that came from my computer. I facilitated different connections with my existing uh, nonprofits to make sure that BPAA was uh, represented uh, and known and got members jobs. This is things I hope to do more of uh, if I'm elected onto the board. And I'm Thank you, Yannick. Thank you so much. And President Stanfield, I see your hand raised. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Cynthia. Uh, I'd just like to respond to several things. One, um, someone asked about the, how has the older generation, I guess, on the board helped the younger generation. I think there's mentoring that goes on on the board because we have both older uh, board members and we have younger board members and that is a form of mentoring at all. 
Uh, I don't think you all realize how far BPIA has come in the last five years because we were practically dead in the water. So uh, the fact that we've had a hardworking board has helped us to move things uh, very fast. BPIA, I think, is I participated in BPIA programs years ago, but we had wonderful conferences and they were conferences that involved, uh, focused on the region, focused on topics. And I think these are things that we need to do because we need to get African-Americans involved in all of these various areas, private sector. Uh, how do we respond to members and relate to members? I think I have personally gone out and recruited people to participate in our programs. Uh, one of BPIA's more popular programs was I think sitting at the head of the table where we had a young ambassador and we had people from the older generation. So I think we should look at what we can do and continue more of these. We're certainly responding as much as we can to our uh, diverse membership. Uh, the board has done an awful lot. You have to remember this is a working board of 10 or 12 people. Uh, and what we will need to do is expand the volunteer section of and get more volunteers involved. Uh, Yannick mentioned partnership. I agree with you that partnerships and we've worked with other existing organizations to help us do that. So there's a lot to be done and I think we can do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, President Sanfield. And I believe I see Colo's hand raised. Please, please share your thoughts with us regarding that question. Um, thank you very much. I think um, <clears throat> I would like to share my thoughts on sort of um, how to best serve new audiences. Um, I think we can all realize and recognize the PPI has done a lot um, over the years. And just as its existence is just, you know, um, a point of success, I would say. But I think that um, as we move on, you know, into the next field of our profession is that we need to really start engaging also a private, private sector, specifically opportunities for international affairs and private sector, I'll tell you why. I was recruited or headhunted by a big tech company that was interested in my experience as an international trade affairs individual, probably also because I'm a woman and probably also because I'm black. And so we really need to start engaging with companies proactively instead of sitting back and waiting for you know, uh, fierce opportunities to come our way. And that's something that I would really like to bring on board and use my networking skills and the opportunities that I've had in the past to engage with companies to say, here's a set of really talented black people that you would like to look at in the highest level of your organizations. And so sort of expanding our experience past the traditional diplomatic field into all fields across the board. And I think this is something that we can really add value. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of our comments. And I believe that this has been some really exciting exchanges that we've had. And there's definitely a role for both of us to play. The generations are integrated and we're meant to be a family. So the young learn from the old and the old learn from the young. So that's always been a part of BPA's motto. And, and I'm pleased to see that that exchange of ideas will continue. So thank you all for sharing your thoughts. Now we're running down to the end of our session, but we do have one more question that I wanted to raise. So let's see what kind of synergy and excitement we can pull out over that. So the question I wanna raise right now, BPIA has a strong and growing network of institutional members and sponsors representing industry, government, academia, international entities and charitable organizations. What are your thoughts on strategies for expanding mutually beneficial opportunities between our sponsors and our members? And I know that those who are running for the business and industry positions or those who have a involvement in business and industry will be the perfect ones to address that question. So Earl, any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, indeed, thoughts on, and I'm, I'm uh, very glad to hear my brother Brian uh, speak to those uh, with, with particular, with personal interest and great ideas. I, I think indeed that we, um, that the possibilities for 
BPIA achieving all the goals that we've mentioned across the board are, 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 are we're made more able to do those by bringing in the strength of other organizations. And we know that we're gonna bring in the strength of other organizations only if they are getting value and being partners with us uh, in addition to just writing a check once a year uh, and that we are getting value from their uh, contributing to our programs. So I, th I think the, uh, the, the opportunities are, are endless there. I think it needs to be beyond the, the narrow group we've had. This year we, brought, we went beyond government agencies to, to bring in um, uh, several new private sector organizations, the one of which has uh, taken the step of uh, putting on its front page that a part of its diversity, and diversity equity inclusion strategy is joining BPIA to, to include to expand its reach and its impact. Uh, and I, I, I looked at that critically because I wanted to make sure what else they were saying. And they had a very deliberate, very inclusive strategy uh, on screen that they spoke to and joining BPIA was one of those. I think we have the potential to um, impact diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, across all sectors by making sure that we are that hub that, um, that organizations like, like Dexas and Stonebridge and, um, and the other private organizations are, are, are coming to recognize along with the not-for-profit services organizations and government agencies. So all the potential is there. Uh, uh, as Brian says, it's gotta go beyond transactional and be real strategic collaboration uh, that is uh, mutually strengthening between us and our partners. Okay. Oh, where's my hand? Thank you very much, Earl. Uh, Suli Kenyatta is another candidate for the business and economic development position. Suli, do you have any thoughts about that particular question? Yeah, and I think a lot of people have kind of touched upon it across the different uh, positions. And I think that's more about how do we expand across just not only the public sector in terms of partnerships, organization, but also bring in the private, bring in the philanthropic, uh, and just really uh, be able to make those connections, those pipelines. I kind of have like a biased view in terms of from the economic development side, uh, in terms of like, how can we really leverage a lot of the regional, state and federal like organizations uh, that are actually like focused on this, like want to help create these pipelines, whether it's from education to private or education to public. Uh, and how do we leverage those kind of those establishing pipelines to ensure that uh, communities of color have those opportunities uh, and not only like take a step past mentorship, but also get into more of the sponsorship, uh, kind of like placing them in those roles, kind of like ensuring that they are actually like given that opportunity and given a heads up just because like they need it and those initiatives are really trying to put them in those, those positions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Cal, as the incumbent in this vice president, Got my hand up. what are your thoughts? I think uh, most, am I on? Yes. Yes. Al, we can hear you. Okay, I can't, okay, I see myself now. No, it's important that we have a strategy going forward. Um, I think Earl has pointed out what he has been able to do and it's really commendable. We need to build on those successes. Um, I mentioned earlier that I've spoken to the US Chamber of Commerce. The strategy behind that is twofold. Number one, the chamber itself. They have a vulnerability and they know it. And we are in a position to help them to be more responsive to the needs of African Americans. And in the corporate sector today, particularly in the financial world where I came from, Chase and places like that, they're really actively recruiting African Americans. Uh, there was an article in Bloomberg about London looking for people from African Americans to go to London to work in the private sector. So what we have in BPIA is a pool of very talented and motivated young professionals. And this is recognized by anyone who looks at our membership. So we need to use a strategic approach, build a framework going forward. I would also point out very, very quickly, we've tripled our membership in the last year, if the numbers are correct. We've tripled our financial position. This was done through a different approach, a virtual approach, an online approach. Um, I look at all on the young people. I encourage the people who are running for positions, even the position I'm running for, bring your ideas to the table because it's your world. It's your world going forward and we really can make a difference. 10 seconds. Thank you so much, Cal. And I see two 
Three hands. Three. Right? So let's start with, and we are winding down. So I want to be sure we get to the last three individuals who want to respond to this question. So we'll start with Yvonne Hubbard. Yvonne? Yes, quickly, I just want to build on, it's, it's very good that we have gotten a lot of partnerships and, and continue to develop partnerships. As we said earlier, DE&I and A is, is, is on everybody's tongues now. It's good for somebody to put it on their website. It's good for them to say they're joining with us, but we have to make sure that there's action behind it. We have to make sure as an organization that we internally provide the necessary skills in networking, in resume, in interviewing, so that we can have those individuals go to those organizations. We may want to look into having, how can they, and I think Suli has mentioned this also, how can we have those people when looking at our, our members and having them actually sitting in those organizations that extended amount of time in some kind of internship program. When we talked about uh, program management, somebody talked about that. When we were talking about program analysis, when we were talking about those things. So we have to, hold, we have to show our partners what we have by our network of people that we have. And so we can say, here they are and we can and use them. So we, th I think that's our next step with our partners that we have de de developed. John, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop finished. Okay, Cynthia had another technical glitch. Uh, Brian, I think we'll uh, respond to you if you could sort of keep your answer concise and then the, we'll move forward from there. Thanks. Absolutely. And so, you know, yes, BPI has a strong growing network of institutional members, but I think we need to also expand this definition, not just of institutional members, but membership generally. Um, we know that Black people, we look at things differently, right? And so uh, we know that activists and advocates are professionals. And just imagine how many of those actually have inclinations, as we see when we look at Brexit, we look at a lot of these implications in Afghanistan, the impact of people of color and that these social justice movements are not just here, they are abroad. And so we actually should hopefully be able to expand our membership to include those activists and advocates who don't normally and traditionally see themselves in an international affairs, national security space. Um, because as we do that and support them, I guarantee you that the dollars that are already trying to flow to give their way out of, of what equity means will also follow that membership and it will help increase and, and bring us up to our best selves to better uh, support all of the facets of blackness as it is. Thank you, um, Ms. Kugler, would you like to respond? Yes, I just have three very, very short points. One, I think this has been said uh, before, I think that we can use this time, the pandemic, very valuably to sit down and to identify specific institutions that we really would like to align ourselves with. I think uh, institutions that reflect our values and institutions that we would like our values uh, reflected within. Also keep pushing um, for sponsorships, for scholarships going forward uh, with our sponsors and professional opportunities that's a given but also give value to our sponsors as well. Uh, one of the things that we can engage on is probably from an academic point of view is engaging institutions and events and offering ourselves as panelists on some of their events. And secondly, probably one thing that we would like to have in the future is have a meet the sponsors event where they come on and they give us what they get, you know, they tell us what they give to us and what they would offer to us, as well as we getting to know them and their uh, institution, what they would offer obviously professionally and otherwise to us as well. Mr. Evans, would you like to respond? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry that I joined late. I had another commitment. So I'm actually running for the Vice President for Education and Exchange. I would like to add, uh, because exchanges are partnerships. So uh, with my background, I do a lot of work with young professionals and the youth. 
So I hear a lot of people talking about the youth and I definitely have the experience um, with what I do because I'm the CEO and founder of Millennium Mom Boys. And I've also worked with BPIA with youth events. So what I was thinking is that basically we will utilize the youth, high school and college students. We will mentor them and develop them for professional success and also track their um, success. And how do we do that? We do testimonials. So when they are able to express um, what we have done for them, changing our lives, providing internships, mentors, these particular mentors, they will be signed to mentors where um, they will specialize in a certain field and they will learn more about the field. And then we will, fi we will find a gateway for them to work for these companies. Once they join these companies, then we will continue to track them so we can ensure that we have a return on investment. And what is that? More members. What do you want? Young people. Young people need to see what's going on and what, what we're doing here in the organization. I am a new member. Um, I've only been a member for a year and I don't see, I didn't see too much of youth involved. So that is why I worked with B BPIA as a member uh, to uh, to introduce the uh, global trendsetters. So this was a high school event where it focused on international affairs and it gave them a lot of exposure. So I had a lot of uh, great feedback from that. Thank you. Thank you. I think we reached the end of our scheduled time. It was supposed to go from seven to 8.30. However, if members of the committee who are members who are running for positions, if you want to stick around, uh, hang out 